Okay, this is the croc we call Papa Wiggles here at Aces. This is one of the large, almost 12 feet, I think it was 11.3. Crocodiles relocated from San Pedro that were deemed dangerous. And he's in a very small holding facility because we're currently under construction. These two crocs, that croc you just saw, Papa Wiggles, along with... Where is he? Oh, there he is. <laughs> Could you miss that? This is Clint. Clint Crockwood. <laughs> and he's actually 12... Actually, 11 foot 8 inches. It's closer to 12 feet. This crocodile here was actually living in and around the UFC housing area and had been spotted underneath some people's homes. This croc has been fed, aka Satan, by ambergris locals for years as a tourist attraction. He has no fear of humans. This is the croc that you might have seen in the nighttime clip footage that came right up to the golf cart. We know these two will get along for the most part because they've been sharing a wall in their holding pens right now and there hasn't been any fighting even though it is breeding season the end of right, This is the American Crocodile Science Containment Facility. Right now houses four American crocodiles and one egret. <laughs> Alright, meandering canal system gives them plenty of space where they can actually get out of the visual area of each other to avoid conflicts. Plenty deep, lots of land. That's where we just came from. That's the back side of the pens where the two large crocs were. And that is the canal entrance to the Rio Grande River, which brings food and nutrients right through this PVC floodgate right here, which is lined with rock. Just trying to show you how these are built so that you can see what now we're trying to do. A little lizard on her back. How cute is that? <laughs> Snapper's been here the longest. She was brought to us from Corazal with the Police Forest Department. And when she had been captive raised as a hatchling and was left abandoned with 15 other crocodiles at a facility up in Corazal. And um, it was very unfortunate. They were feeding on each other. They had like no water. And uh, when Snapper was released into this first holding containment area that we built here at ACES, it was the first time that she was ever able to swim. Alright, I'm now at the far end of the croc habitat. I don't see George, but I do see this one we're naming Tamara, or Tam Tam. This is a, a female that we were able to put in the facility because our problem here is is we have room for these two large males I showed you earlier in the small pens. However, because of George that's in this habitat is a rogue male and very aggressive. He's already killed two rescued crocodiles here at Aces. We don't want to waste our efforts and have him kill anymore. That's where we came from. This again is the Morlet pen. Our house in the background. Okay. So, since we can't put those two in here without for fear of them getting killed, we're trying to be in, build a new habitat to house George, and we'll put the two males in here with the girls. There, there's George. This is the large row male causing all the trouble. He's 14 feet. He was being fed on a daily basis by locals, chicken, and he is one very aggressive crocodile. And like I said, he has killed two other rescued crocs here at ACES that were in the containment facility prior to us placing him into it. And so we know there's no way we can put two males in here with him now that would just fight to death. All the crocodiles here are problematic or injured or ill-kept or inhumanely kept and have been confiscated by the Blues Forest Department, remain property of the Blues Forest Department. Um, Vince is up there cutting boards to finish boardwalk going through here and we're still trying to, we still need another 6,000 US dollars for fencing up for this habitat after we're done here. The boys right now are bringing rock down, that's Elias. A catchy worker here at ACES 
and they are literally wheelbarrowing rock, breaking it up by hand, and wheelbarrowing it down this hill from that pile of rocks right up there, because that's all the closer that the truck could get in to dump the rock. Uh, we could cut trees and make it easier to do this and not have to do so much by hand, but we do not want to put a hole in the canopy because of the black collar monkeys. So, literally one rock at a time will be chopped up and brought down here. The rock is used in the gates between the pens and it will also be used to line both sides of the boardwalk for security against the fencing. The floodgate will be placed right here between these two watering areas with PVC pipe and a lot of this rock right here to allow the water still to come in and out twice a daily with the tide. So we'll take a walk up there where Elias just went with the wheelbarrow. And get we're at the top of the hill. The guys are loading rocks, some of which they've busted up. And we're now looking down on the containment area. We're hoping someday to have a platform that walks right off of here flat, like an observation deck that people can walk out on to make it easier for those that are older or have difficulty walking to be able to enjoy the crocodiles as well. So the purpose of this is to make a habitat for crocodiles that otherwise would have died or been killed. They are a threatened, highly threatened species, only 10, 20,000 left worldwide. Uh, the generator you hear in the background is because ACES is totally solar operated and so when we're doing construction we use the generator for cutting wood and such. I hope that gives you a better look at ACES and what we're trying to accomplish. Um, why it's so important to save these animals. Um, crocodilian blood and research studies and laboratory studies has proved to kill HIV and herpes simplex. And um, they're just a beautiful, amazing modern day dinosaur. And if it wasn't for ACEs, this animal would be destroyed. And the sad thing is, is if we can't get this habitat completed for him, and raise the funds to finish it, he may have to be destroyed to save the other two because they cannot stay in the small holding facility that they're in. All the crocodiles here at ACES, just like George, were rescued by ACES because they were either deemed problematic, in, as in George's case, or they were being illegally and often inhumanely kept. If it weren't for us rescuing them, for ACEs rescuing them, they would be dead, of succumbed of their own unhealthy living conditions, or killed. ACEs provides a facility where people can come and learn. We teach school groups here and try to educate the children on the importance of not feeding wildlife and how important the apex predators are in the world's ecosystems. So please help save George by donating today.